In this video, I'm going to look at the hydrolysis of condensation polymers, and then I'm going to look specifically at polyesters. So a quick reminder of what we mean by hydrolysis. That's the chemical breakdown of a substance by reaction with water. So we can represent that with a simple word equation. So if you take a condensation polymer, you react it with water, the water will break the polymer and reform the monomers that the polymer was originally made from. Now you'll notice from the equation that this is actually a reversible process. So going forwards, this is the hydrolysis process. So what do we call the reverse process? Well, if we take N monomers, or lots of monomers, and join them together to make the polymer, and we also make a water molecule for each combination, well, that's condensation. So technically, you can hydrolyze polymers with water, but you can see I've written up some extra information on the bottom here. It's actually too slow if you just use water. So instead, we use hot aqueous acid or hot aqueous base. And it's very, very important that you reference the aqueous part because that's your link with the water. So what I'm going to do with the rest of the video is I'm going to focus on the acid and base hydrolysis of polyesters. So we'll start with the acid hydrolysis of this polyester. This is actually terylene, and hopefully you can spot the ester link straight away, this C double bond O, single bond O. So which bond's going to break? Well, it's the ester bond, so that's this C single bond O. We've got another one here. It would be an O on this side here. So We'll break that one as well. And we've also got this bond oops, here as well. So all I've done is broken the bond and I've sort of created the, the parts that are left over. So this is not the finished thing, of course. It's just we're getting to the final part. So what's going to go here and here? Well, from the water, we're going to get OH groups. So we're turning the C double bond O part in the repeat unit back into a dicarboxylic acid. And then what's going to go on here? Well, we're going to put H's on there and we're going to turn that back into the diol. So essentially, we've reformed the monomers that this polymer was actually made from in the first place. And if you remember on the introduction, I talked about this being a reversible process. So adding these together makes that, and a water molecule obviously, and breaking this down makes those. So if we had to turn this into, into an equation, which we sometimes have to do, let's just think, well, what have we added here? We've added an extra OH there. What have we added here? There's another OH gone on there. What have we added on here? We've gone from this C single bond O to OH, so there's an H gone on there. And then here, we've got an H gone on there. If we count them up, we've got one, two, three, four H's and two O's. So in other words, for this entire repeat unit, we've added two moles of water. Now, that's for each repeat unit. We've got N repeat units. So we would use two N moles of water. And that would create N moles of the dicarboxylic acid and N moles of the diol. So you can see I've written up the overall equation there now. So we've got N moles of the polymer, terylene, requires two N moles of water. There's the reference to the fact that it's acid hydrolysis, so I'm putting the H plus above the arrow, and I'm making N moles of the dicarboxylic acid and N moles of the diol. So here's a question for you to try. 
got this polymer here, it's a polyester. You can see the ester bond kind of at either end of the molecule. So obviously that single bond O will just repeat there, so that would be ester there, you see. So this is called polylactic acid. And you can see there's two questions. Can you draw the structure of the product of acid hydrolysis? And then can you turn that into a chemical equation? So simply breaking those ester bonds in the polymer chain, it's going to be breaking this bond here, this bond here, and that's going to generate this. So what are we going to put at this end? Well, that's going to be an H goes on there. What's going to go on this end? That's going to be an OH there. So we've generated one monomer this time. So this is a hydroxy carboxylic acid. So how have we done that? Well, going from this to this, we've added just an H on this end here. Going from this to this, we've added an OH. And so effectively, for each repeat unit, we've needed an H and an OH, in other words, a water molecule. So you can see I've got the equation written up now for n moles of this repeat unit. So in other words, the polymer, we're going to need n moles of water and that's going to generate n moles of this single monomer. So we'll take a look at the base hydrolysis now of polyesters, and I'm using the same polyester, that's terylene, um, so we can see a direct comparison between the two types of hydrolysis. And I'm specifying the base as being aqueous, remember we must reference the water, aqueous sodium hydroxide. So there's our repeat unit. I've already indicated the bonds that are going to break, so they're the ester bonds. So let's have a look at what's formed. So simply pulling the repeat unit apart would generate these two things. What's going to form at either end of this C double bond O? Well, in the, in the previous example, acid hydrolysis, we've got OHs going on here. But remember, this is base hydrolysis. So if you think about it, OHs will go on there. But then because there's base present, there's sodium ions present, this H plus will be replaced by the metal ion, so sodium ion, in the base. So we're actually going to get a salt formed. And we're still going to get this diol. So how do we turn this into an equation? So let's look at what's changed at this end. We've gone from this to ONA. So we'll just put that on to help us see which atoms have been added. So we've got another ONA there. And what's gone on here? We've got an extra H there and an extra H there. So let's add this all together. And you can hopefully see that we've got two lots of NaOH required per repeat unit. So there's your overall equation. So we've got the repeat unit of the polymer, n moles of that, requires 2n moles of sodium hydroxide, and we're making n moles of this dicarboxylate salt, and n moles of the diol. So just like before, we're going to apply this now to polylactic acid. So we need to hydrolyze this with hot aqueous sodium hydroxide. So what would the structure of the product look like? And what would the equation for the reaction look like? So there's the structure of the product. So if you think about it, these bonds have broken here. So on this O, we put the H and that turns back into an alcohol group. And... Initially, this would become a carboxylic acid, but then we've got to factor in uh, the fact that there's sodium ions present from the base. They would replace that H plus ion from the acid and form the sodium salt. So there's the structure of the product. We can very quickly turn this into the equation as well. So we've gone up a hydrogen on this end and an NaO on this end. So essentially, that's one mole of sodium hydroxide for every mole of this repeat unit. So we've got n moles of repeat, making n moles of this product. So we're gonna need 
n moles of sodium hydroxide. So hopefully you can appreciate that's now the chemical equation.